for entrance and to win. O God, come to my assistance, O Lord. Make haste to help me. You are my rescuer, my help. O Lord, do not delay. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. The Lord be with you. And I welcome you to our Mass today. It's the 18th Sunday now, in ordinary time. And our intentions for the Mass today, we have Fintan Conlon, at anniversary, Dara Craven, Peter, Aileen, Mary McArdle, and deceased family members. Eternal rest grant unto them, O Lord. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful departed to the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. So we begin our Mass indeed by calling to mind our sins. And we are warned today, and you notice in the readings, of not of falling in, into the trap of greed, any kind of greed, whatever that might be. And we are urged to become rich, not in the goods of this world, but in the very sight of God, just simply to be detached, because we have to leave all of it anyway behind. You, are, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit, Lord of mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner, Christ of mercy. You bring light to those in darkness, Lord of mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God. And on earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. <clears throat> The first reading is it's a reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Vanity of vanities, the preacher says. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. For so it is that a man who has labored wisely, skillfully, and successfully must leave what is his own to someone who has not toiled for it at all. This too is vanity and great injustice, but what does he gain for all the toil and strain that he has undergone under the sun? What of his laborious days, his cares of office, his restless nights? This too is vanity. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> the response to the psalm. O Lord, you have been our refuge from one generation to the next. You turn men back into dust and say, 
Go back, sons of men, to your eyes a thousand years are like yesterday, come and gone, no more than a watch in the night. O Lord, <clears throat> you sweep men away like a dream, like grass which springs up in the morning. In the morning it springs up in flowers, by evening it withers and fades. <clears throat> Make us know the shortness of our life, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Lord, relent, is your anger forever. Show pity to your servants, O Lord. In the morning, fill us with your love. We shall exult and rejoice all our days. Let the favor of the Lord be upon us, give success, to the work of our hands. <clears throat> and the second reading is a letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Since you have been brought back to true life with Christ, you must look for the things that are in heaven where Christ is, sitting at God's right hand, let your thoughts be on heavenly things, not on the things that are on the earth, because you have died, and now the life you have hidden is with Christ in God. For when Christ is revealed, and he is your life, you too will be revealed in all your glory with him. That is why you must kill everything in you that belongs only to earthly life, fornication, impurity, guilty passion, evil desires, and especially greed, which is the same thing as worshipping a false god, and never tell each other lies. You have stripped off your old behaviour with your old self, and you have put on a new self, which will progress towards, through knowledge, the more it is renewed in the image of its creator, and in that image, there is no room for distinction between Gr Greek and Jew, between the circumcised or the uncircumcised, or between barbarian and Scythian, slave and free man. There is only Christ. He is everything, and he is in everything. But this is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> so we greet the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. Your word is truth, O Lord. Consecrate us in the truth. Alleluia. May we acclaim your holy gospel. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. A reading from the holy gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. My friend, he replied, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, Watch and be on your guard against avarice of any kind. For a man's life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he has more than he needs. And then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, what am I to do? I have not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I will say to my soul, my soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. So take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, Fool, this very night, the demand will be made for your soul, and this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when a man stores up treasure for himself in place of making himself rich in the sight of God. And this is the gospel of the Lord. <clears throat> <clears throat> uh, 
There's some very uh, fundamental spiritual truths in the readings, I think, today. We've all heard that first one from the book of Ecclesiastes about vanities. Vanity of vanities, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, all. All is vanity. And vanity is a word in the, it, say, it means something like, in Hebrew, I think, a vapor, you know, like a wind or vapor. Some people translate it like bubbles. You know what bubbles, you see these bubbles come, pop, they come and they, they go, bu bubble up and then gone. Life can be like that, like bubbles, you might say. And there's an old Irish phrase that says, you never see a trailer being pulled after a hearse. No. And like this might be a way of trying to sum up even today's parable. See, the rich man places his security in accumulating more and more wealth. But for all his wealth, he doesn't realize that his life is about to end. See, no matter how much you have, or how, how you've earned it even, at the end of the day, it's gone. It, it goes like that, doesn't it? No matter how rich you are, it doesn't matter. At the end, it simply goes. It's like that. And I think the, the gospel writer is really talking about greed, of course. Greed, as we know, is one of the deadly sins. So it can affect anybody, all of us. Greed in many of its different forms. There's greed, of course, for money, which is the most, the ordinary one, for riches and wealth and more and more and more, you know? But there's also greed for esteem, for power, and for fame, or whatever it might be. We don't get enough of it. And we won't, once we get a bit, it'll crumble, gone. It'll crumble again, no matter what we have. Experience in ordinary life teaches us too something like Think of the, the children, many children fight in the playground because everything they see is mine. And when Jesus was confronted with this man, you could think of it, it's, it could be anywhere. Tell my brother to give me a share of, of our inheritance. A dispute over inheritance. So, so common, aren't they? Go to any place, you'll find it. You'll find it anywhere. You'll find it in our own parish as well. You'll have all of that stuff. Uh, and many families have fought even over these things. A house even, or a plot of land. You know, friends, you've fallen out over some a dispute over money or a small amount of money, whatever. Their colleagues no longer speak to each other over something that has failed, an agreement they had, or a failed investment. And then you've, on a wider scale, you have nations that go to war to see what, to get what their neighbors have. Fundamentally, it is all, it's, it's about greed of some kind, greed, which can become like an idol. And it's, it's called idolatry in, in the gospel. The issue of money is not in having it. But money is a good thing in itself, because with money and health, education and welfare that flow from it is a good thing. And it's good to enjoy our money when we have it, to enjoy it in a good sense. Whereas we know poverty is an evil that God once wiped off the face of the earth. The problem is what we do with money and what it does to us. All remember not so long ago, the Celtic tiger and all that happened then. 
There was a greed, of course. There was greed there. There had to be. All the speculators, even the banks, and the builders, all the shoddy buildings they put up, thrown up, you see the results of it today. See, greed took over. And, you know, in an attempt to get rich quickly or to stay rich, you know, most Western countries or nations, they gamble away 10 to 15 times more money than they give to third world development. So much is given away, gambled away. And in many countries, people suffer as they simply struggle to maintain their, their basic food security while others live in incredible, extravagant luxury. The contrast is incredible. Those who have, those who don't. It's shocking to read that globally. One third of all food is wasted. And of course, humanity itself is at a crossroads where our habits of consumption are concerned. We know that the earth and all her ecosystems are at breaking point because of the continued exploitation of the resources necessary to feed our consumption habits. We are never satisfied. And of course, all the media and the, all these, the adverts, they're trying to get us to get more and more and more and more. No end. Now, when faced with the enormity also of the world's poverty, the bad spirit can convince us that there's nothing we can do about it. On a daily basis when, uh, when shopping, can we distinguish between needs and wants? If you put up needs on one side and wants on the other, what would they be like? needs and wants, because today too many wants are considered needs, and they're not really needs at all. So Jesus, I think, is examining us, he always does, to, in it, to re-examine our priorities and values. The parable teaches us that there is more to life than our possessions. And importantly, the parable is a reminder, too, that we are not to store up goods in this world. Because at the end of our earthly lives, we will be accountable for our souls and how we use the graces available to us. It will not matter how much money we saved, or how many houses, or cars, or television, or whatever we owned. These things don't matter at all. I think, you know, at the end of life, uh, what can you bring with you at the end of our lives? One, I thought, wise man, he said, at the end of your life, what you bring with you is what you give away. That's what you'll bring to heaven, because you can't bring the other things. But what you, what you give away is really charity. It's really charity. That's what you give away, and that's what you bring with you to heaven. So let us pray together our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through whom all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures, 
He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. So, Father, we come today not seeking wealth and pleasures for ourselves, but that in your love and generosity, you grant our prayers for those in need. So, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus warns us against pursuing material wealth in this life. We pray for the wisdom to recognize that life on this earth is short-lived and that our time is best spent in living a Christian life and preparing for eternal happiness in the presence of our God in the next. Lord, hear us. We pray for our families and communities and ask the Lord that we be enlightened to create a living and vibrant parish where kindness and love of neighbour are ever present in our lives. Lord, hear us. We pray for our Pope, Pope Francis, that the indigenous peoples of Canada find in, in their hearts to forgive our Christian churches for the abuses suffered by thousands of their children a so-called Indian reformative schools. Lord, hear us. And on this August bank holiday weekend, we think of all road users, and there have been so many accidents on our roads recent times, and motorists, cyclists, and pedestrians, we pray that they will all travel safely. We pray also for those who have recently lost their lives in accidents and for their grieving families. Lord, hear us. And we pray for peace and an end to conflict in the world. Lord, hear us. Now we bow our heads for a moment, remember in silence our own personal intentions and the intentions of those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, hear us. God of love and gentleness, we ask that you hear our prayers and grant them according to your will. We make these prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. of his water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to share in her humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble 
and with contrite hearts. And Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as an exaltation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me, mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, with Eamon and Michael, our bishops, and indeed with all who minister in the church. And remember, indeed, those for whom we offer this Mass today, and also our dear brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that 
with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. So now, as brothers and sisters of Jesus, we have the privilege of speaking to our Heavenly Father in this way. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that, by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For peace, Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your Church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. Our Lady, Queen of Peace, pray for us. Lamb of God, Lamb of God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Do we have any Eucharistic ministers in the church?
for communion and the food. You have given us, O Lord, bread from heaven, endowed with all delights and sweetness in every taste. And let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those ye renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never-failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace and love the Lord indeed by your lives. <laughs>